Am I good? All right. I'm going to pray and then we'll get started. Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you for this day that you've given us. I just pray that all that you have stirring in my heart, I'm able to convey your love for each person here. Help them to understand more and more their identity as your children, the beauty of relationship with you, and the freedom that comes from that. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and allowing us to be your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I'm going to teach tonight on, on, basically everything I teach out of is out of a life lived and a submission of life to a loving God, okay? And we're going to get down to the root of, of the root teaching of the love of God, because that's where everything is. Um, Rich Mullen said, our only hope is the love of God, okay? And I was listening to Josh Garrels, he's a musician, and he said, he said that um, religion at its worst is when we get into these little clubs and we sit around and we talk about God, but there is no love, there is no compassion, there is no forgiveness, there is no redemption. So the idea for us coming together is to stir each other up in love and good works. So that's my hope tonight, is you will understand your identity as a child of God, and that you will understand God's love for you specifically. Because a lot of times we hear, God loves you, and we think of that in the general sense, you know, that God is love. But the identity as far as your creative value and understanding who you are, and then the, the beauty of a free life that comes out of that place. Um, I love the idea of what they sang about the simple gospel, you know, the beauty of that God loves you, and that he desires you to come back home to him, right? The prodigal story is perfect for that. And I was thinking about what I used to think of, what religion was, was kind of a moral checklist of the things I needed to do in order to receive God's love. Right? Instead of understanding, you know, it says in um, Romans 5, 8, for God demonstrates his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We didn't clean ourselves up in order to receive that love. He loved us where we were, and it's that love that motivates our obedience. Religion is, I need to obey so that I can be accepted. The gospel teaches that you are loved and accepted, therefore your heart desires to obey. Okay? So I'm going to go back down to the roots of why we are the way we are, why we struggle the way we struggle. So I'm going to go back to, if you can put that first, Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Um, then God said, let us make mankind in our image. So we are supposed to be the image bearers of God. He made us in his image, right? And then what happened is because of the fall, um, that image was lost because we decided that we wanted to be an autonomous. In the garden, the, the lie was, you can be your own. They did not want to submit their lives to God in that moment, so they chose to be their own. Right? And that's when the fall came, the fracture of what happened. Because the promise was, when you eat of this tree, they said you can eat of any tree, but just not this tree in the middle of the garden that was the knowledge of good and evil. Right? So they ate from the tree because it looked good. And what happened in that moment was fracture. And he said, if you eat from that tree, you will surely die. And yet they did not die. What died was the image of God. Right? So now all of a sudden, can you put that other deal up there, Matthew? For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost, and that's the image of God. Right? So, our, so our deal is, is that we, that image was lost, right? So we have the ability at any time in our lives to come back to the Father, to the love of God. So we come into the world each one of us come into the world apart from that love of God. So why do we go down the avenues that we go down, the idolatry, the different things that we're searching for love and acceptance, right, apart from God, because we were meant to be connected to the love of God, right? So now all of a sudden, we think that somehow that relationship is going to satisfy that soul, that longing that we have, because the longing within us is to be his, 
right? And yet we go down path after path after path after path, looking for that fulfillment that we can only find in him. But the beautiful thing that happens is when we submit our life to God, and that's why I think a lot of people in the church struggle is because we incorporate Jesus into our life without fully submitting our life to God. Because at the root is still self-centeredness. The brokenness from, from where we're coming from, because we come into the world um, self-centered, self-seeking, searching for love and acceptance because that which was lost was the image of God, the love of God being connected to him. But we have the ability at any time to be reconciled to the Father, reconciled to the love of God. Now all of a sudden, we have the image of God. We're back to that place as if we never ate the tree. And that's what happened seven years ago for me. I was in church before, and what I thought of, you know, like I said, I thought it was this moralistic checklist. What I thought a Christian was is you didn't drink, you didn't cuss, you didn't watch a rated R movie unless it was about the crucifixion of Christ, right? That's what I thought Christianity was, and it's preached some places. That's not at all, right? So out of my life, I submitted my life to God, and what happens if you make the tree good, the fruit that's grown is good. Instead of trying to focus on the fruit first, right? You, so often we focused on behavioral modification inside of the church. I need to behave in a certain way in order to receive the love and acceptance of God and others. Okay? It's the opposite. You need to submit your life back to God, your loving Father. Then He restores you. He reconciles you. He's the root. Right? So it's the root that a lot of times we're focusing on in the wrong place, we're focusing on the fruit instead of the root. But the root of God is that he loves you and desires to have a relationship with you. Not just a compartmentalized Christianity where you come to church on Sunday, you hear a message, you feel a little bit better about yourself, but there's no life transformation, right? It's about your life being transformed into the image of God. And that's when you become free. That's when, so I incorporated Jesus in the beginning of my relationship with God, because I went from a life of depravity and brokenness into church life. So I was a bad guy, doing a lot of bad things, ended up becoming broken, right? Now all of a sudden I get to that point of going into church, experiencing God's grace, but I never came to the end of myself. It was still rooted in self. Now what I'm doing, instead of doing all this self-centered, self-seeking stuff, I am focusing on, you know, doing good works inside of the church, right? And I'm getting my identity from that, but at the core of that is still self-centeredness. So I'm doing good works, but I haven't come to the end of myself. And it says, those, the one who tries to hold on to his life will lose it, but the one who lays down his life for my sake and the gospel will find it. Deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me, right? It's, it's throughout the gospel. Seven times it's mentioned the same scripture, but in different places. And that, that means it must be pretty important. It's not deny the devil, it's deny yourself. It's at the core, right? So that's where the beauty happens. Now, all of a sudden, in a submitted life, before when I was in church, I didn't experience the fruit of the Spirit. I didn't have peace. I didn't have joy. I didn't have contentment. I didn't have anything. I was just trying to root my identity on what I did. But now all of a sudden, seven years ago, and it wasn't in a church service, it was in a bathroom mirror after a three-year addiction where I should be watching my kids, but I'm actually in the bathroom after a three-year addiction and unhealthy relationship, and I should be watching my kids, but I'm watching porn in the bathroom. Right? I looked in the mirror, I was 160 pounds, I usually weigh about 210, and I was at that point of surrendering my life to Right? And I said, I'm yours. I don't know what this looks like, but I'm yours. And I submitted my whole life to God. I didn't compartmentalize it. I'm going to give Jesus this part of my life, but I'm going to hold back the rest. Think of that when they say, I ask Jesus into my heart so that I can go to, so, so I can go to heaven someday. Right? That's a, that's a very, that, that's part of it, but that's not what this is about. Christianity is so much more than that. So much more powerful, so much more beautiful. It's about your life complete, completely being transformed more into his image. And he is love, right? So what happens in that 
Now, all of a sudden, wherever I go, whether it's in Bakersfield or wherever I am, I'm able to be the fragrance of God's love because I came to the end of myself. But if we don't come to the end of ourselves, that's where we struggle. So it's about dying to self and experiencing God's grace, his mercy, his love in our life, and then we get to be that light wherever we go. That's a lot more powerful than just incorporating him into your life for a better day, right? So that is the good news, is that we get to be more like him. We get him. It's not what he can provide us. So often our focus is always on us. How is this bettering me? All this stuff, but really the beauty happens is when we become more like him. We become more loving. We can become more compassionate, right? So it says, those who do not love do not know God, for God is love, right? So a lot of people that are inside the church that, that don't understand who they are and whose they are, right? So they're, they're incorporating Jesus into their life, but they've really never come to the end. Because what happens when you come to the end, you end up becoming more loving. You become more compassionate. You become more caring. You, you become way more forgiving, you know? So basically, the attributes of Christ come into our lives, and then we become more and more like him. And that is the good news. So, um, let's see. You were created for you. You were not created. You were not created for you. You were created for His image. Okay? That's that's the root of it. As far as we weren't really created for us, we were created to be His. And what happened is because of the the fracture, the fall. We are separated from that love. Now, all of a sudden, we're always searching and striving for that apart from him. But the beautiful thing that can happen is you can come back to that loving father as if you never ate the tree, no matter what you've gone through in your life. It says, come to me all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest for your soul. That's his cry out to you, is say, saying, come home. I love you, and I want you to experience my relationship and my love for you. Right? Is that about, should I go to the questions? Sweet. So we have a couple questions. And what we're going to do is we're going to break off into, how big, Brett? Four or five? Yeah, four or five. Four or five people in, in little pockets, if you can gather up. And we've got just a couple questions. Um, do you have children? How many? What are their names? Can your children do anything to lose your love for them, right? And if we're flawed, you know, um, you know, and that's, I think of that, I've got a 16-year-old and an 18-year-old, and they can frustrate the heck out of me. They could do a lot of bad behavior, but my love for them will never change, right? And if, I, if I'm a flawed father, God is a loving father. It's a little different than, than we are. Anyway, um, let me pray real quick again. Heavenly Father, God, I just, I thank you for loving us while we were yet sinners. Your, your son died for us, and, and you show us your love by that, God, that we didn't earn your favor. We, we just accepted it. We don't have to achieve to receive. We just have to experience your grace and then become more graceful. Experience your love and become more loving. God, I thank you for each person here. I, I pray that something is seated within each person's heart, that they might know your love a little more today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, guys.